And um, we got a question in on the offensive line coach and whether we know of any candidates at this point. Well, the job's not open. So um, that's until I, okay. the job is I, open. I was wondering whether I missed that or not. No. Okay. I didn't. All right. No, I, I know that's, that's one where you wonder how much longer Ryan day can tolerate some of the, the um, recruiting misses where they kind of have guys in their grasp, but they can't seal the deal. And it, it happens every year and they still also sign some really good guys every year, but they could probably sign more if they could just hold on to some of them. So I know like every year, I think people expect Greg Stadrower to get the boot. And I don't know if this is the year it, it wouldn't shock me. Then who do you go get? You better go get somebody who can obviously teach, but also you better go get yourself a recruiter because that's why if, if you do get rid of them, that's why you're getting rid of them. My thought, <clears throat> again, kind of parallels what I said about the defense being able to uh, stop the run in the pass. I think what you had was an offense and an offensive line that was built to beat all but the very, very best teams in college football. And I don't know that Oregon necessarily ended up in that category, but Michigan, it appears, certainly was. And by that, what I'm saying is, is you could get by playing four offensive tackles on your offensive line and not having two traditional road grader run blocking guards uh, because uh, those tackles, the four tackles that lined up on the offensive line, uh, kept a clean pocket for C.J. Stroud. And he was able to throw for 300 yards every game because of that. And that when you're able to do that, that um, – makes up for a lot of the mistakes in the running game. The teams that they were able to line up and run the ball against, um, you look at it and um, uh, they just weren't able to, uh, to deal with Ohio State's physicality in those games. But when the t chips were in the middle of the table and you had to line up and run the football, they couldn't do it. And I think the question they're going to have next year is you'll have two natural tackles, and you're going to have two natural guards, it would appear, back on that offensive line. Figure Harry Miller and um, Jones, Matthew Jones, would probably be your two guards, and Luke Whipler would probably be your center again. Are they going to pass protect to the level that they pass protected in 2021 with two centers or with two a center, two guards, and two tackles next year, as opposed to the four tackles. So it's a push pull type thing. You were built to throw the football all over the lot. They kept him clean for the most part. And then of course, in many regards, they were exposed. This offensive line was exposed by what Michigan could do. Uh, for whatever case, uh, all the pre snap penalties the holding penalties and everything kind of came home to roost in that game. And that's a, a poor reflection on Greg Studrala, certainly the play of the offensive line in that game. Now, what we don't know, and no one's really ever said, was it Greg Studrawa who was pushing to play four offensive tackles? Was it Kevin Wilson and Ryan Day who looked at it and said, we're going to be a throw first team and run – occasionally, which is kind of how it turned out. Um, and we're going to get by with playing four offensive tackles along that offensive line. And was it their idea? Was Studrawa pounding the table for Matthew Jones to play? We don't know. No one has ever said what the internal discussions were, where the blame lies for how this all came about. But this was not an offense built for all seasons and all – all disciplines because when they had to run the football in the biggest game of the year, they couldn't do it. <clears throat> and they couldn't pass protect either. So, but other than that, other than that, they were great. 534 yards a game. Whoop-de-ding-dong. You're 10 and two.